stream yard. Well, welcome to the seven o'clock talk. Sorry, we're trying to stream to Instagram too. And every time something new comes up, it's a whole new set of headaches or challenges, I should say. But tonight we're going to talk about the uh, benefits and our experience so far with the cold plunge. And I have to say, this is all her doing. And so I'm going to let her take the lead on this uh, because she has done a tremendous amount of research. And let me say one thing. We've said it before, and I think we were talking about it last week with basically how challenging her case is. And this is a case of she's doing the research on herself and the things that we discover in our testing and stuff like that. So she's actively in her case, as well as all of my functional medicine patients. All my functional medicine patients are actively in the case. And that's the wonderful thing about functional medicine is it's not about me barking commands. It's about, hey, maybe if we try this, or I read this, or I'm interested in this. So you were very interested in cold plunges. I will let you take the lead, babe. Yeah, I've been, inter I've been interested in this and probably, I, I don't know, I've probably been dabbling and researching for about six months. But I don't know what I stumbled upon that got me really interested. It, you know, they, there's all kinds of benefits, but the more I... I research it. There's so much more than even like the basic ones, but we'll just go over the basic ones. So I kind of tried to figure out how I could cost effectively get a cold plunge tub just to see if we liked it. He didn't really want to do it, but we're actually fascinated. So we started the, so my, my cold plunge tub came on Thursday we put it together on Friday and Saturday morning we started our cold plunging. And what you, so let me back us up just a second. She wonders when she was interested in this. She was getting um, lymph massage and the lymph massage therapist was talking about That's that. Right. So she was looking at lymph drainage and she wanted to know how can I mimic lymph drainage or lymph massage with with something else so that's been almost a year ago i bet you that's almost two so, years now. so i've been re researching it quite a bit and i have a few friends that started doing the same so we i follow their journey and then i'm like you know what i'm just gonna go and get me a cold plunge tub so i just was like hey babe the, the tub is coming this is what we're gonna do so he was like, well, I'll watch you. But then he's like, no, we'll do it. So, so for myself, the reason why I'm interested is because I have issues with lymph drainage. So I can gain eight to 10 pounds in a day sometimes. And then I would go get these massages. And then I would be like a, a whole size, two sizes smaller the next day. It was amazing to me. So it's, it's not actual fat it's fluid. And then, so I have learned to dry brush and do all these different wellness care things, but nothing, it, it probably laziness on my part. It takes a lot of time and, and work every day. So I also have, you know, aches and pains, joint pain. It's, it's specifically in one of my fingers, but mostly the hip. Yeah. The hip. Your food is finger numbness in my feet but we kind of think we know. And I have a lot of issues with detoxing in my, in liver functions. And so I started researching in this. I just kept going down rabbit holes after rabbit holes. And I'm like, the, the there's so much benefit to it and a little bit of pain maybe, but mostly probably mental, not necessarily real. It's just the thought. But then the one thing that I have but was super excited about has nothing to do with the health benefits. It's the fact that it's truly, um, it's, it's totally probably 90 plus percent mental. 
And so that the idea that you can set in 32 degrees of water without squealing and jumping around and jumping out and in and actually sitting down and focusing and breathing, I, like truly focusing. And I always think it's like looking on the inside of your, your skull and like laser focusing on your breath and what's happening in your body and almost feeling like you are, you can make yourself, will yourself warm. So to add to this, if you are an experienced meditator and you work on breath and breath work, this is a very challenging method to test how well you do breath work. But once again, back to the benefits of cold plunge, huge upside, very few, if any, downside. And we will share those with you. So for me, my experience with how I feel and how my body reacts and how I feel is wonderful, but it's totally exhilarating and to really control, like to, to really like look, it really teaches you a lot about who you are and how you work. And so that makes me excited because I can excel at this and then because I can really hone in to who I am and get in my spot. And even though I'm freezing to death, I can, I can push through. And so I, this morning we were sitting here and I'm like, this is why people say, if you panic, you die because I can totally see, you know, I know that there's nothing bad going to happen to me, but your body doesn't care whether you're controlling it or you've just fallen through the ice. It's still going to react the same way. And so if you have the ability to control your mind and your breath, then it gives you the time to think and, and react appropriately. So having said that, a big benefit to the ice baths is learning to control the mind. It, your, the brain can rewire itself. It releases endorphins, so that is a huge benefit for people with anxiety and depression or emotional traumas. So it teaches you to focus and really think about what's happening. So that to me, that was like a, a side note a thing to all the other benefits. This was the thing that pops in my head that makes me most proud of the the little challenge that we've done for ourselves, but this has the lymph drainage is a huge benefit. It helps because your lymph drainage doesn't have a pump like your heart. So you rely on passive motion. Well, muscle contraction, right. To pump the lymph around your system. So if you're not moving, then you swell. So Ship the shivering and then this sheer just reaction of jumping in the cold water and everything constricts down. It pushes the stagnant lymph and gets rid of the blockages. So, and that can last up to three hours. So it's not only the constriction, but it's the warming up process and it's the dilation of the vessels. So the experience of that is when you jump in the tub, I don't care who you are. I was watching, um, <laughs> Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin tried to do this and his first chance into it, he was at 45 degrees and he bailed and he doesn't control his breath. But the contraction of your body in the very beginning is so intense that when you're breathing, as you go to breathe in, and she'll tell you when I go to breathe in, it's like <clears throat> you can only breathe in in short stints because everything's so tight and then you just gotta relax and then as you're breathing out it's a so it's they call it Wim Hof yeah and you take short breaths in and you exhale slowly so um it's, it's a four seven eight breathing except you don't get the seven in you you can get the four in but when, but we have found that if you lose the focus on the breath, you lost. You're screwed. It. You've lost it. And so it really, and so then you're fighting to get control again. 
And so that it reduces inflammation <laughs> because of the vasoconstriction and the dilation. So it helps remove the toxins from your body, which also reduces swelling. Um, it releases your endorphins. So those are your, and your, and your dopamine. So those are your feel good hormones. And that, that again, helps with anxiety and depression. And that, that helps rewire the brain. Well, and you feel that immediately as soon as you get out. Yeah. It creates mental alertness and Ooh, focus. It's you're, yeah. you are mentally sharp. And so it's supposed to like push the cobwebs out of your brain. Like it, it, you're really going through and just clearing out junk in your body. And it's absolutely fascinating to help the cobwebs. The other thing is she was talking about sleep. I was getting ready to go to that. Go right ahead and then I'll tell so what I what I'm, I saw. I'm just going to go through some. And these are just some of the benefits of cold plunging or ice baths. You, you know, you can, and, and all of my information did not come from just Google. These are Google Scholar um, peer-reviewed evidence-based articles. So um, it, you can get better sleep. It helps reset the circadian rhythm of the body. It reduces your stress from the endorphins, which helps you sleep better. Um, it diminishes your aches and pains because of the coldness. It um, numbs nerve endings, gets rid of the toxins, gets rid of the swelling. Um, so this morning I could have used the excuse that I had a headache, but I didn't. I, I, I look, actually look forward to getting into the cold plunge tub, but they've also found information in studies that it helps with headaches and migraines by, and that goes along with the vasodilation and constriction, getting rid of the toxins and things like that. It helps improve injury recovery. So athletes, athletes love this. They, they actually plunge at cooler temperatures for longer, but ideally you should, optimally plunge from three to five minutes for wellness at temperatures between 50 to 60 to start. And then you lower that. Um, they say optimal is between 40 and 60, but you can go as low as your body can tolerate, but that's going to be different for everybody. Or if you're quite nuts, you just start at 40 and you yeah. go for three minutes. And we then just you... jumped in with both feet. Yeah. <laughs> it can increase your testosterone in men and women. It can increase libido, helps balance your hormones. Um, we already talked about it promotes the lymph drainage. It boosts your immune system because it, um, it so when you jump into the water, it vasoconstricts. So all the blood goes from your fingers and your toes and it goes to your vital organs. So it's going to flood, the blood floods into your organs like your spleen and your liver. So you're going to release white blood cells and you're gonna get rid of all those toxins. Um, so it helps with your hormone regulation, increases your metabolism by increasing your metabolic rate. And in, this one was fascinating. And we're gonna follow this one pretty close because I eat very clean but I still have a problem with um, insulin sensitivity. Well, so, and liver enzymes. And insulin resistance. So it, help, had, it has been proven to help with insulin um, resistance by improving your cell's ability to process the glucose that you take in. So we're going to watch that. Um, what was I getting? Oh, so beginning, you should ideally start at 15 seconds at lower temperatures. So, and you don't need to go get a cold plunge tub for that. So you can sit in your cold bath water, you can take a cold shower and. I think the cold shower is harder because the cold water is going over your head and it's very hard to control your breathing in the shower. I think the cold shower is harder than the plunge because we don't put our head under. No, because we haven't made it there yet, but that's a, that's a level that we haven't reached yet. Yeah. But if you can do that, it actually stimulates your thyroid gland and there's all kinds of other benefits to that. So we are not dunking our head just yet, but we're going to get there. So optimally it's three to five minutes. You want to do it at least three times a week. We have chosen to do it daily. It's optimal to do it in the morning within 30 minutes of waking and 
you are going to be driven by your body. So it's your, it's, it's, it's personal for every single person. So something I may be able to go for minutes. He may not be able to go for four minutes, but it's, you learn to listen to your body. So who should not plunge? So anybody with cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, um, has had a heart attack, has had a pacemaker, um, is pregnant, has Raynaud's, which if you don't know what Raynaud's is, it's people that have red and purpley blue tips to your, you'll see it in people's fingers because they have reduced circulation. So this can make it worse. Um, what's the other one? Uh, pacemaker, you said? I, guess I said the pacemaker, Raynaud's. Asthma? Um, low blood, um, low body temperature. So if somebody is struggling to keep their body temperature up, you wouldn't want to cold plunge because you, you are going to decrease the body's temperature very quick. So not only is the benefits from the jumping in the cold water, it's the warming up process. So ideally you get out, you just pat yourself dry, take off your wet clothes, but you don't drink hot fluids. You don't get in your heating blanket. You don't go take a hot shower. It's your, the benefit is also in the warming up process and how fast you recover. So it took us about 45 minutes to an hour the first time. And we will, we plunge outside. So then we come back in and then I feel like I'm warm back up in about 15 to 20 minutes. However, I will get cold really quick again. And, and then I, so if I walk through like a draft, I'll get cold. But I'm not cold. My fingers aren't cold. I just feel like I'm cold. Susan wants to see a demonstration. I say, we'll invite you over, Susan. We'll let you plunge, too. Well, we're actually thinking <laughs> about doing a cold plunge at the clinic, and you are more than welcome to come. So let's take a step back. And I am a metric guy. I have to see the numbers. And so if I see numbers, then I can then I can, well, what do we want to say? If I see the numbers, then I believe Before it. Before I forget, um, you should not cold plunge if you have asthma or respiratory issues because it can trigger an asthma attack. And don't cold plunge without a friend. So you can have a reaction at 50 degrees or it's the same well, as Well, then you say we, we have somebody we know that cold plunge and she had a hard time getting out of the tub. Yeah, so, so if you are plunging at really cold temperatures and your body is shutting down, you get brain fog or you can't process, then you're, you're in danger. So you should get out. Um, so that's why you should ideally cold plunge with a friend. Which so, so metrics-wise, I wear an aura ring and... I watch, I monitor my metrics really close on my sleep because people who are APOE 3-4 or 4-4 have a higher incidence or rate of risk for Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative diseases. And one of the things you have to watch with that is deep sleep. Um, if you're not getting deep sleep, then the lymphatic system in the brain doesn't clean the brain out and you leave, of course, tau and other stuff in there. So what I noticed with the, the uh, cold plunge, and I didn't even look at my metrics until she said something about it. I did my BIA, so I'll cover both. Sleep-wise, I average seven and a half hours of sleep every night. And it's like clockwork. I if once my body gets seven and a half hours of sleep, I wake up with or without a clock. It doesn't matter. And typically I average 50 minutes of deep sleep. And I will say from the very first um, plunge, I average seven and a half hours of sleep. And I, my deep sleep went to an hour and a half. So I increased my deep sleep by greater than 30 minutes. Uh, what is that? 10, 40 minutes. So I almost doubled my deep sleep, which impresses me 
and I can feel it. And I didn't really correlate it until I started to look at the metrics because I went way back and it's like clockwork on me. Seven and a half hours, I get about mm, an hour of REM sleep and it was like clockwork, 50 minutes, 55. And on these, um, on Saturday, I'll just tell you what I got. On Saturday, Saturday night, I got, oh, I went the wrong way. Saturday night, I got an hour and 37. Sunday night, I got an hour and 35. Uh, then I went back to my 57 and then I'm back up to an hour and 16. So those are pretty significant numbers. I'm not a statistician. I couldn't tell you what that is, but I average on my phase angle. So phase angle is all about the cell health and cold plunges are supposed to help with cell health because when you cold plunge, the stress, this is also kind of how it helps with insulin resistance. The stress breaks down the weak cells. So the senescent cells that just linger and linger and linger die. They go into apoptosis. They die. Your body scavenges what it needs to, recycles what it needs to, and then you rebuild. And so typically on phase angle, we'll see people do an increase maybe a tenth. And usually it takes a few weeks to see a tenth. If we're using nutrition and we're using exercise, we'll get a tenth to two tenths at a time. Um, we have seen people who go on hormones, jump up three to four to a half of a tenth or a half of a point. But just with the cold plunges, I gained two tenths in less than a week. And that's actually pretty staggering. Um, the other thing that I noticed was uh, when I got dressed, what I call my, my side tire, uh, my side tire is smaller. So both, I am fighting basically just size. And I think that it has to do with toxicity in the area in which we live. And this is supposed to detox. And I've been using the bathroom a whole lot more since we have been doing the cold plunges. And I'm thinking that it is part of the toxicity. We'll know more when we get our tox tests done soon. So, so on mine, we did my BIA, BIA also. And my phase angle is always bad. The best it's ever been was when I fasted for 40 days with just water and unsweet tea. And pellets. And pellets last year in December. And so mine has been, the phase angle's way down here. So it was up here, went way down here, and it's just stayed flat. And so we did my BIA again. And so my cell health went up. The I don't remember how much. Yours went up more than mine. My lean muscle went up and something else. So, but we fight that all the time, and there's not much I have ever do to actually make that go up, but... This seems to be working, so we're going to follow it, and we'll let you know how it works. Yep, we we do phase angles and tests, BIAs, on all of our functional medicine patients, and we do it on ourselves on Mondays, basically. So for people that might be interested in doing a cold plunge and you want to get something outside of your tub or your shower, we just got our hour. Is it's um, you can carry it around with you. It. It's 85 gallons, which it could be a little bigger, but he fits in just fine. And we have... And I'm 6'2", 250. We, and, you know, you, you just need to have it ideally cover your your heart, your shoulders, up to your shoulders. And so it comes right up to him. So it's it was 85 gallons. We put about 50, actually 60 gallons because we added more to it because it, it didn't quite meet your shoulders, but it didn't overflow. So it's right at the top. And I think that the cold plunge tub was around $90. I got it 
through Amazon and I had a $20 off coupon. So I think, and then I got free shipping. So I think the actual tub ended up costing me with all of the discounts and coupons, $60, $61 and some change. So not a huge investment, but it's a nice comfortable tub. It's 31 inches and a half high and 30 inches wide. And like I said, it's 85 gallons, which doesn't seem like a lot, but you don't have to actually invest in that. So you can get a food grade safe barrel. So I've researched all of this too. Um, the most important thing is, is that it's clean and that it's safe. So you can, however you need to make the top ring safe so that you don't hurt yourself. But you want to be able to easily get in and out of it. We have we use a step stool to get in and out. Um, but yeah, there's water starting. There's ice starting to accumulate on that step stool too because it's cold yeah, out there. Um, so it's it's not a huge investment, but you can if if you incorporate that into your wellness routine and you really like it, you can get um, different tubs where they'll actually chill the water so that you don't have to invest in ice buy ice bags but you can also um, freeze water jugs and then you just put the water jugs in your water and chill the water and then you put you just keep freezing the same things so it's not a huge investment you can spend a little bit of money to get a beginner tub or you you can just invest in whatever a, um, go at your own pace yeah I, like a, i'm trying to think of what the, a water trough so they sell like a 75 gallon water trough. So you can Google that. You can look at YouTube. There's all different kinds of things. I think if I really like our little tub, but if we continue to do it, we will probably keep like a bigger one. But um, we started out at 40 degrees. If she wants my head to go under that water, we have to get a bigger yeah. one. But um, this morning we, we broke through a bunch of ice. It was about 32 degrees. There was a half inch of ice it, in the water. I was... say it's like liquid fire. Oh. It's so cold that it burns. But then instantly, it just, it's, as long as you can keep the breath. Because once you lose the breath. And then another thing I wanted to talk about is some people are like, do you shiver? You don't want to shiver. So that's also a mind control thing. So if, what did they call Thermogenic and non-thermogenic shivering. Is that what it was Depends called? Depends on if you want to work on metabolic there's, metabolic activity or not and both regardless both of them help turn brown fat into yellow fat no yellow fat into brown fat so you can discard it out of your body yes but shivering not shivering it's that is a mind thing and for me once i start uncontrollably shivering i've lost i've lost my breath but once i bring my breath back the shivering gets under control and i will shiver inside but i'm not like dramatically shivering on the outside so watching her cold plunge one last thing watching her cold plunge and thinking about it when she starts to shiver and move and i can say from my experience when i shiver and move that little insulation barrier that your hair on your arms and that the heat of your body starts to give you if you move, you disturb that, and it gets really cold again. So that's why you work on the slow, deep breaths. And this is literally, in my mind, what I do is one, two, three, four in. And then I try to hold it for a second or two or three. And then I blow out audibly. And you try to go seven seconds if you can make that that whole repetition right there a good 10 to 15 seconds when you get 12 to 14 to 15 breaths in and all you're doing is concentrating on that and you're standing or sitting still then it goes very fast because today i did three minutes and it was really cold and i was counting i was to 10 but I lost count once and she goes, it's time to get out. And I, I think I looked at you like, yeah, huh, we really? went four minutes one day. Yeah. But the but water, the, but the water was warmer. seven or eight degrees warmer, which doesn't seem like a there lot, no ice on it. but it, it, it's a lot. And, and that brought me to another thing, like the benefits of skin and hair. 
So it tightens your skin. It can, it helps your hair grow, your nails grow and makes your hair thicker. And for people that have eczema or dry skin, it actually helps soften the skin because it closes the glands, the oil glands. So your skin actually keeps more of the oil. So it helps with acne and it softens the skin. So it's absolutely fascinating. And we only touched on just a few of the benefits. I'm actually fascinated by it. I actually look forward to it. I'm, I'm really glad that we started it. If you're thinking about doing it, try it because you might just surprise yourself that you, you actually really enjoy it. Well, I tell you, that's about it for me. Have fun. If you do do the ice plunge, hey, let us know. Tell us what you think. Yeah, just make sure that you're healthy enough to do it safely. Yep. Have a good night.